in the first two years since listing, we've uh, declared a resource, mm -hmm. got into production. What we found is that it's actually 70% bigger than what we anticipated. Mm -hmm. So just the V1, V2 now is what places us in, from a tin inventory point of view mm -hmm. as one of the top 10 biggest tin mines in the world. We've done a, a mapping program over the, our whole license area. And we've identified another 180 outcrop treatment sites. Right. 95% of those have got visible tin mineralization. So when I say we've got a big resource, yeah, yeah. we have got a behemoth of a resource. Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We're here today with Anthony Vullian. He's the CEO of Afriten Mining. How are you? Very good, thanks to yourself. Thanks yeah. for having me along. Well, welcome to London, first yes. of all. Yeah. Why are you over here? Uh, well, mine's money. And um, we, we also just uh, telling people what a great story we, we've got on our hands here. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to learn about tin. I don't yes. know much about tin, and I'm not sure most of our subscribers do either. Yeah. Um, you're the only pure play tin offering on AIM, That's it the, says in here. Yes. Yeah. So, so why don't you start with it? Give us a one minute summary, and then we'll kind of get into that. Okay, so as you say, we are the only pure play tin listed company um, in London, mm. uh, despite uh, many many centuries of of tin mining in in the in the UK, mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a it's a we've got a really unique offering here. Uh, I don't think that um, the the market's quite grasped yet what the scale of the depo the deposit that we're working with, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we come from a a, a really proud de mineral development background, and uh, you know we the the. Uh, opportunity that we bring into the market is really very exciting. So tell me a bit about the company. Just give us that one minute about the company, though. Yeah. Okay, so so um, we've we've focused uh, uh, on a, a, a single asset at the moment in in uh, Namibia. Mm -hmm. um, it's Namibia is a great jurisdiction. Uh, it's a it's a large open cast uh, hard rock tin mine. Uh, it, at one stage, was it used to be the, the largest of its kind in the world. And uh, we, we've it's we, it's laid in dormant for many years, but with the resurgent tin price, uh, you know we want to capitalise on that and and uh, bring an exciting project back back into production. Okay, so that shut that shut down as the tin price has dropped off back in what eighties, nineties, uh, late eighties, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, look, why don't we start with the, the thesis for tin? So, if people are investing in things, they need to believe in the commodity. So, they need to understand where it's going, what the opportunity is. There a future for it? So, why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit about the tin market? So, I mean, people usually associate tin with uh, you know tin caps and back in the day. Back yeah. in the day, yeah. 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 But uh, what 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 uh, people don't really grasp is is the, um, the uniqueness of tin. It's it's only natural substitute is lead, but uh, lead obviously is not not great for human uh, consumption. Yeah. So, um, but uh, what what happened in the mid sort of two thousands is, uh, you know, tin's main use is in is is in solder, uh, specifically in the in the semiconductor uh, industry. Right. So. You know all your cell phones, all of your electronic equipment. Uh, so you know if you picture a green electronic board, all of those little silver dots on it, uh, that's all that's all tin solder. Mm -hmm. And in the mid two thousands, um, it, it, it was actually a tin and lead uh, alloy that that they used. But obviously with with lead, um, they banned they banned uh, lead in all, in all solder, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the tin price just sort of. Uh, Blossomed, and you know, tin was basically revived. But um, fast forward to where we are now. Mm -hmm. um, a, a, a interesting study was done by Rio Tinto. They were shopping around for new metals, and they got uh, MIT to to do a study and see, you know, which which elements or which metals mm -hmm. will be most impacted by new technology. And uh, by far, and amongst anything, I mean, including your things like lithium, uh, vanadium, mm -hmm. uh, cobalt, mm -hmm. uh, tin w was definitely the, m the most prolific um, because it's so versatile and because of its unique uh, uh, physical properties. Right, okay. So tell, tell us what's going on in the market at the moment because obviously I think that the, the news that people are looking at is China, Indonesia, cutting back, or well, some of the smelters, cutting back production yeah. because the prices are at a, you know, a lowish uh, yes. figure and they're, they're trying to affect some sort of rate. So they've, they've not broke the market by what, 10, 8, 10 percent? Yes. So, so it's, 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 a, it's a quite a unique market. Okay? Mm. So it's, so it's, it's quite also not a very big market. It's not a big market. No, it's right. uh, 350,000 tons of uh, production a year. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's, it's quoted on both the Shanghai Metals uh, market as, as well as the LME. And uh, th there's, there's a slight sort of discrepancy, funnily enough, between, between the two markets. It, in fact, it's actually quite buoyant in Shanghai at the moment, while the LME is quite low. Um, but what, uh, what we are seeing is it's quite a unique uh, set of circumstances. Okay, the trade war for, for one, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, with going on between China and, and America, that's taken a lot of the consumer goods, specifically smartphones, which is, uh, 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 you know, the, like um, the, the tariffs that the US have, have put on China mm -hmm. um, has, has slowed down a, a lot on, in terms of smartphone sales and electronic sales and, mm -hmm. and that's that's your basis of your semiconductor market and the semi as I said the semiconductor market is a precursor for for your for tin basically so so that's that's um, sucked a lot of the demand out we think that the semiconductor market is bottomed mm -hmm. uh, you know I think a trade deal will uh, emerge hopefully soon okay <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, so, so, so we, we, we've seen a, a slight cutback in, in demand on that side, um, but then coupled with that is uh, on, on the on the supply side, as you rightly say, you know, the um, the, the Chinese smelters have have cut cut back on production. Um, at these levels, uh, there's not a lot of tin producers that that will be making money. Yeah. So uh, you know. While it doesn't look good from our point of view, I, th I think it's actually building up to a perfect storm. And we saw a similar scenario in the vanadium market. You know, when when you get a lot of uh, supply coming off and uh, and, a, and a push in demand, yeah, it, there's going to be a, there's going to be a pinch point. And I, you know, I think that we're heading towards that pinch point in the it, market. I think a lot a lot of commodities obviously have that as the yes. nature of supply and demand yeah. economics. Yeah, okay, exactly, yeah. um, for tin. Though you've got the Far East represents a huge consumer yeah. and producer, and of course, as usual, the smelters control supply in the market. That's uh, right. They can turn the tap on, on and off. And yeah. you know, for companies, you've got to work out where you fit into that mix. Yes, yeah. And as a smaller, as a junior, you know, you're just yeah. you're starting out in, in, in the process here. I'm interested in understanding what you and your board yeah. are doing to position yourself yeah. to be able to take advantage of whatever the, those market forces decide. Because I agree with Absolutely, you, yeah. trade wars, yeah, no, we don't know when, yeah, when, yeah. That's, when that's going to manifest yeah. itself. But what are, you, what are you foreseeing and what are you doing in terms of set, the setup of your business to be able to enable you to, one, survive, yeah, yeah. and two, compete yeah. economically? Yeah, okay, perfect. So, so look, from our point of view, you know, we can't control the, the macro elements, okay? Mm -hmm. so. So the basis of all the businesses that we uh, uh, that we've uh, uh, sort of embarked on is being is controlling the costs. So mm -hmm. we need to be the lowest producer, uh, the lowest cost producer mm -hmm. of tin concentrate, and that's that's our focus is right. is on being it because because. So explain to explain to me. You got you you got, you got ore, yes. and then you have got concentrate. Yeah. So you're saying concentrate is concentrate. where you're going to yeah. you're, you're going to concentrate on. So <laughs> so yeah. why? Okay, because uh, so the biggest value uplift in the, in the tin supply chain is actually digging out the ground and, mm -hmm. and producing a sixty to or seventy percent uh, tin concentrate mm -hmm. and selling that to the smelters. So, despite uh, you, you know uh, China, you know, and the smelters being able to to switch on the supply and mm -hmm. what have you, that's for the end product. Mm -hmm. Where there's there's a massive shortage and remains a shortage is in the is in the concentrate. There okay. Are, there, in the in the world, there is not enough to concentrate to meet existing demand. There, there is a, so there's no new mines. A lot of the old mines are either sort of going um, running out of reserves, and the, the, none of the the newer mines are, are you know in difficult jurisdictions like DRC or Myanmar, and and there's nothing of this scale mm. that. Is, is going to be bringing a base load of, of tin concentrate to the market. Well, it's, it, it's got potential scale, right? You know, first yeah. of all, you know, yeah, yeah. It, but, but before we move on to yeah, yeah. that yeah, yeah, opportunity yeah, yeah, yeah. is, let's go back to the Chinese and the Indonesians, okay? Yes. So you're saying there's not enough supply of, of concentrate in the market, yeah. right? but they've decided to turn off nearly 10% of the production yes. for a reason, because prices have 
come back down. That's right. Whatever think, people think it's going yeah. to do, right now it's an and they're hoping to affect some sort of price increase by cutting, cutting the supply. Yeah. So what, what do you mean by there's not enough supply of concentrate? That they're, they must be sitting on reserves here for, to allow them to make that decision, no? No, well, look, I mean, it's, so just anecdotal ev sort of uh, evidence. Yeah. Okay? I mean, the, so outside, so we we'll forget China because they smelt their, their own uh, um, concentrate, they produce mm -hmm. it. So 56% or 60%, call it, of, of the world's tin is from underground sources. Mm -hmm. So difficult to mine. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, 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 uh, the balance is probably used from artisanal and, and dredging, right. which is environmentally bad in, in, in Indonesia and places like that. Mm -hmm. Only 6% of the world's tin is produced from uh, open cast mines. Right. And, and, there's only, and that's only one miner, okay, which is Patinga in Brazil. So there is a, a and all of, the, all of the tin outside of China generally goes to two smelters, mm -hmm. which is M Malaysia Smelting Corporation and, uh, and Thai Saka. Mm -hmm. And they can't get enough concentrate. They will, they will buy concentrate uh, from, from where, where obviously uh, um, ethically sourced right. uh, tin concentrate. That, that they can't get enough. They, and that's that's why we've we've got an off take agreement with Tarsaka and that's for what uh, for whatever we produce they will they will buy it basically. And what are the, how do you work the terms of that out? Well, it's it's it's, it's 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 on a on a smelting um, uh, spot uh, minus uh, whatever yeah. discount. Yes, yeah, but but I mean we're getting about ninety two percent payability on on our tin concentrate on the LME price. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's, a, that's a little insight into the market. Yes. We'll get into some detail at another, another, another point. Yeah. So let's talk about what you've got today. Okay. So you've got, some, you've got a lot of historic data, you've got yes. historic mine that's yeah. produced, uh, and it's got some potential for some large scale yeah. there. But where are you today? Okay, so we took a, a very different view uh, when, we, when we floated the company. You know, I think that uh, the junior mining market uh, in general has, has got a bad rap and, uh, over the last couple of years and uh, you, you know there were a lot of a, a, a lot of our colleagues and or well, not a lot uh, they're, they're, some, they're, some, some yeah. have, have a bit of a reputation for uh, not for not delivering you, you know and yeah. guys will uh, typically come along and they'll raise money for to drill a few holes and then they'll come back to the market and raise a bit more money and drill a few more holes and mm. and and I think that there's been a bit of fatigue um, in the market in general uh, about guys not delivering and, mm -hmm. and not being able to uh, bring so bring something to account okay and and uh, you know we've we are, are through and through miners basically and uh, our philosophy is getting you know delivering projects right and, and delivering successful projects and you, you, you know our, our sister company, Bushvolt Minerals, obviously. Well, well what is the connection? And you were one of the founders. You're yes. still a director there. That's right. They have eight yeah. percent because of the uh, Mokapane. Yes. Um, components. What's the actual relation? You say sister. Is it? A yeah. So, so I mean, when when we when we floated Bushvolt, the, yeah. uh, we had some tin assets in it. Right. And we, we were uh, there. We just, okay. we didn't have the scale at that stage. So we incubated um, the tin assets within Bushveld with a view to demerging them, and the acquisition of of Uis, uh, in Namibia uh, gave us that critical right. mass. So they've, they've not put money in. The you've you've taken the assets. Yes. Right. Okay. So they have a position. So it's, it's when, that's what I'm trying to understand. what yeah. Sister company yeah. means. Do yeah. they have any input? No. no any no. cash coming, or is it well, just that? So so, the, so they they have. Uh, we, we did uh, get a working capital facility uh, through a local bank, and they earlier backed earlier, by backed by Bushveld. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. yeah that's so. the two. And a, how much was it? Sorry. Uh, uh, two and point three million pounds. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. So, so look, I mean, and you know, there, there is a lot of obviously, you know, I'm still involved with Bushveld, mm -hmm. but um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, synergies in terms of uh, human resources between between the groups. And, and you we, rent offices, from and them. we rent off offices from them. There's yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. Un understood. So, so, so let's get into. You, you, you talked about what other miners do yes. or don't yeah, do. Yeah. So, 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 what are, what have you got? What are you so, doing? Why are you different? So, so look. I, I mean, it, as I said, you know, we we're not here to uh, 
to to uh, you know drill holes and holes and holes. Mm -hmm. We had to identify a resource and bring it to account as quickly as possible. So typically, what you would do is you know guys will, will come to market and they'll go th go through a long process and mm -hmm. and may or may not achieve production. So mm -hmm. what we decided to do is fast track our production. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know rather than go go through the traditional uh, feasibility study route. We mm -hmm. actually built our, feasi our our feasibility study, which is our phase one plant, which right. is which is what we've done. So, in the first two years since listing, we've uh, declared a resource, mm -hmm. got into production, mm -hmm. and we are now positioned as as one of the the preeminent tin developers in the world. Preeminent. Yeah, that's, there's a phrase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you've got into production. Okay, I, look, I happen to like that business model. I've seen it yes. work quite well elsewhere in, in, in gold and other commodities. Yeah. So, um, identifying the economic component of the resource and getting into production and producing cash, not necessarily net cash flow, but yeah. a gross number which you can utilize. So people can see that it's a route to market. Yeah, You're showing yeah. a route to market, yes. which is great. Um, and that you've got the know-how, the metallurgy works, et cetera, et cetera. I, yeah. I, I do like that. Yes. So, but what precisely have you got? I mean, is this much more than a pilot? Or yeah. is it a bit more robust than that? Yeah, look, I've, I, you know, so uh, coupled with, with that strategy, I also, um, rather than rely on consultants and contractors, mm -hmm. I bought my team in-house. So mm -hmm. uh, I've got a a really good team of, of engineers that I've worked with for, for mm -hmm. uh, a number of years through our, 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 our other uh, endeavors. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, what, what that's allowed me to do is, is build, build a company around my team rather right. than building a team around my company, if, if that makes any sense. Okay. So, 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 you know, we a really strong, dedicated team. So they've, uh, um, they've, you know, ra rather than sort of uh, conceptualize something and working in a, in a silo like uh, you know, mm -hmm. typically consultants do uh, just mm -hmm. by, by the nature of the business you know we've we've got a really strong brains trust uh, you know uh, um, uh, that that's actually come up with it with a really uh, you know but so tell, tell me about that I want to hear about that what, what have they come up with so so we've so we've taken what what was mined historically so we've taken that flow sheet Mm -hmm. um, and and what we've done is we've we've modified it slightly. So um, it, typically it's a it's a gravity separation circuit. So mm -hmm. there's no chemicals. It's all about uh, you know flows and mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and gravity basically. Yeah. And um, so the old timers used um, a, a jig, uh, yeah. uh, which was their the main uh, sort of form of concentrating. But we've we've uh, used uh, dense media separation, right. and uh, and so dense media separation is a lot harder to Commission, as, mm -hmm. as we as, as we mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. in the process of doing, but the the, the recoveries are, are way are, are a lot more efficient, right? And uh, and you can get a, a much greater throughput. Than, so um, you you've improved the efficiency. The efficiency by yeah. from what to what? So look, I mean, we we are we so with with this phase, I mean, we will probably be around about 60-70 percent. But uh, you know, for the for phase two, mm. we could probably push it up to about 80 or 90 percent uh, uh, recoveries, right. which is huge. Uh, you, I guess you'll know more as you go through. Yes. So that, you know, 80 yeah. 90 is a big difference. 60, yeah, 70 is a big difference. Well, I, I, I say that because you know, the, uh, uh, gravity plant is is more about art than than science. You right. know, it's it's. It's like little tweaks, you know, mm. adjusting the flow, th the flow here, right, and there, you know, it's and it's all about getting that efficient liberation. Of so, the to answer my original question, which yeah. was, is this much more than a pilot study? Yes. Is it? Yes. Right. Yeah. So, so look, I mean, we call it a pilot f a phase. I mean, the throughput's still going to be the size of the historic plant. So right. It's it's a okay. but, it, but it's it's a it's an economic it's a pilot project, okay, rather than a pilot plant. If, if so, okay. so it's it's um, it's it's developing the hypothesis of mm. how this this can actually make make money, and this is and look, okay. it's making money, you know. It's producing money. Yes. It's not making money yet. Yeah. No, no, no. no it's not making money. Okay. Yet, yeah. Okay. Understood. So, how much money is it throwing off? Because I know it's relatively no, new. So but yeah. So I mean, we we we'll be finishing our ramp up at the at the end of the year. Right. So, so it's been a three month. Uh, okay. Uh, really sort of, early. Okay. Uh, ramp up. 
So, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we've actually got our first shipment. I've just got a confirmation from the freight forwarders. Uh, they're picking up the first shipment uh, tomorrow morning, which is quite exciting. Yeah, well, that, uh, that is exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you've gone, gone from theory to reality because you've yes. moved it, got it out of the ground, and you've, you, you, you've sold it. Okay, so that's phase one. What, yeah. else, what else is in phase one? Was that it? So, so what's, what's been quite a unique and very sort of, I call it exciting discovery. Mm -hmm. um, and as a, as a, as a minor, a, a discovery is always, uh, mm. always something that you, that you strive yep. for. So the old time was actually mined predominantly for tin and that they, they didn't, they, they, there was no other sort of, there's no need to, to look for anything else. They, mm. would, they just wanted the tin. But obviously as technology has moved on, um, uh, we, when we when we did our confirmatory drilling program uh, and declared our initial resource, mm -hmm. uh, which was basically, I mean, we knew it was there, but uh, it was confirming the tin resource. But we assayed for a wide variety of different elements right. um, because these the, these uh, uh, pegmatite bodies are, are very unique geological mm -hmm. specimens in, in that uh, they're intruded with a whole host of different goodies. Mm -hmm. And um, what we what we discovered to our, our delight was actually that. Uh, we've got a tantalite resource and, mm -hmm. and, and a massive lithium resource. Right. So, so that that's uh, from that point of view is a, is a game changer because typically what we what would happen is you would uh, be putting all of your lithium uh, onto your waste dump. Mm -hmm. Now we add a, another a, a, another bolt onto the circuit uh, and we run the waste through there and we extract lithium. Well, okay. So I need to understand that because yeah. that, that's. That's a big statement, okay? So yeah. we, we've interviewed lots of l pure play lithium companies yes. who can't mine lithium economically, no, right? Can't. Yeah. So lithium's a tough space at the moment, and yeah. even if it comes back, you've kind of got a big market of very, very low cost lithium yes. producers, okay? Yeah. So you're gonna have to work out whether you can extract it yeah. economically yeah. as part of your process now, or do you leave it and do it later when the market comes back for lithium, presume, and yeah. same for the tantalite, right? Yeah, yeah. So, talking about it and delivering it economically are two different things. Yeah. Okay. So how do you how do you manage how much time and money you spend now exploring yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. We're doing it. Yeah. Versus actually, we need to be sensible about how we spend our money. You've raised three point yes. eight million recently. Yeah. You had a little bit of money in the bank. You've got to be careful with your money, right? Yeah, so yeah. what your so what's your focus and how do you how do you make that call? So so look, it's it's not. Um, the, 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 it's quite so. The way the, the circuit's set up, okay, mm -hmm. is uh, you, you know you go through your crushing circuit mm -hmm. and then into your dense media. The heavier material is yeah. your is your tin concentrate and goes through the rest of the concentrating circuit. Yeah. The lighter material, your feldspars, and your lithium, uh, typically reports to your waste. Okay. Right. So it's not uh, like all we're doing is then just basically cleaning that up. Yeah. And selling the concentrate. So it's not, it's it's not that we not we're not focused on the tin. It's just we it's it's being produced anyway. So there's no meaningful additional cost mm. to doing that. No. So then the yeah. question is, depending on what the the price is, the market versus what you what yeah. cost you're attributing to doing that. Yeah. Are you can you make money on that? Well, so I mean, at this stage, yes. Okay. Right. So, oh, so, okay. so typically, uh, the the lithium that you're talking about is is spodumene, okay? Not, not all right, okay, well, but yeah, mo mo mostly, yeah. Uh, you know, that's that's, mm -hmm. um, and w what we've got is is a petalite, okay? So okay. it's a, a low iron uh, petalite concentrate, mm -hmm. it, it, which will grade at about four, four, just over four percent, mm -hmm. which is quite a high grade mm -hmm. of of petalite, and that concentrate serves a niche in in the market mm -hmm. so it doesn't typically go to batteries it will go to glassware and, and mm -hmm. ceramics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and that's that's the niche that we will look to exploit in the um right with with the lithium so, what, so have you done some studies on it or you, is this part of the ongoing it's, process it's part of the ongoing process have and, you and sold any into market no 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 not yet are you stockpiling it it, we are well. I mean, it's, it's on the waste dump. <laughs> right. Okay. But, but there are plans for yes, that. Yeah. Yeah. So that can sit there until you think the market is really justifies it. it. Yeah. So because what you've spent on it, time wise and money wise, yeah. is ne neg negligible, negligible in the scheme of things. It, it, absolutely. Okay. And the tantalite, same. 
Yeah, well, tantalites. Uh, so essentially, the the concentrate uh, is so the the, the tin occurs in a crystal called a cassiterite, mm -hmm. and um, the cassiterite and the tantalite are mm -hmm. associated with one another. So, but the tantalite is magnetic, and mm -hmm. the cassiterite isn't. So, at the, at the end of the circuit, we you you put a big magnet there. The we take the tantalite and mm -hmm. sell it for one hundred fifty thousand dollars a ton. Right. And uh, he's, uh, and then he sold it, the, the sold it tin. So, right. so, so obviously we don't. It, there's not huge amounts of of tantalite. So what what do you know in terms of the economics of that? Because you know, I, yeah, people throw out figures. Yes, it's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's expensive stuff. Yeah, but what does it mean for you? So we so basically ten percent of every ton will be is will be tantalite basically. Okay, yeah. recoverable. Recoverable, yeah. And sellable. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's just, as I said, it's just a magnetic separator. So when do you start monetizing that then? Well, at the same time as, as the tin, I mean, it's part of the concentrate. So, okay. Yeah, so it, it will, whatever, when, whatever ton of tin we produce, we'll, pr we'll produce the 10% okay. the, the, uh, uh, of so that will be. You just said you're, you're, today's the day, first shipment being picked up. Yeah. Is part of that time slot? Uh, we haven't. Well, there, well, there is there is a, a, a portion of tantalite, Yes, yeah. Which, uh, but, which but, you're being paid for. Yeah, but we won't, we won't sell that to the smelter. We'll, that, that, uh, that's a different uh, offtake agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, will you give the market some guidance as to when you start understanding these numbers, like yes. in Q1 next year? Oh, are yes, you going to yeah. be able to start saying, okay, lithium? Here's where we are. What does yes. what it mean economically for us for this year? Exactly. Tantalite. Yeah. This is what we think it could mean for us this year. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. You're not and and you know, just to go back to your point on on you know focusing on on uh, tin. So the whole focus, as I said, is is on producing the lowest cost uh, yeah. per ton of of tin concentrate. So yeah. by being able to sell additional byproducts, mm -hmm. it lowers it lowers my cost of tin to to the sure. point that. That's what I'm asking about. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. intrigued because I want yeah. to know these credits yeah. are very, very meaningful at the point you can process them economically and then sell and them into the market. Them. Exactly. That's what I think everyone's buying into. So yes. if I look at chat rooms and forums, yeah. there's not a lot of understanding about it. And that's why I'm asking about guidance. Yes. At what point are you going to be in a position to talk to people about the economics around this? Yeah. Uh, so, so we uh, obviously were given all the historic data we were obviously very confident uh, which is why we built the phase one plant to produce tin yep. but uh, the reason also behind doing it in two phases mm. is understanding exactly that is you know as i said we've built our feasibility study and and that's that's what we're doing is is figuring out how we can extract as much value as possible so when we do Build something that's going to be six times bigger than what we've got now. Yep. We know we will know exactly where the push points on the economics of that plant are going to be. So let's talk about phase two. Yes. What does that involve? Okay. So let me talk about my resource first. Perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. So so typically what what would happen uh, is the the ISCO who mm -hmm. owned the owned the plant. Mm -hmm. So they would mine. The, the, so these pegmatites run for hundreds of kilometers. Mm -hmm. So they essentially old lava flows and mm -hmm. then uh, they, they, they were intruded by uh, different elements mm -hmm. so so they're basically a whole smorgasbord of different elements which is where the whole byproducts come mm -hmm. so we've got a huge license area in namibia yeah. 200 230 odd square kilometers mm -hmm. and <coughs> what they would do is they would identify where the, this pigment pigment types would outcrop mm -hmm. and then they would test it and open a pit so they mined historically over twelve different pits, okay, and that in itself was, I mean, by today's standards, would the resource and reserves would be uh, one of the top ten uh, tin mines in the world, mm -hmm. okay. So, so we went and got a lot of historic data, uh, and the, the the pit that they stopped mining at, is we we uh, re-drilled that, confirmed that mm -hmm. resource, and what we found is it's actually. 70% bigger than what we anticipated mm -hmm. and uh, the, we draw, draw the down dip extensions and it, it actually thickens at depth. Okay, So just the V1, V2 right. pit is, is now currently... Is it measured and... A, a me measured and indicated. Indicated yeah, basis, right, okay. The down dip is, is inferred. Right. But um, 
so, so, so just the V1, V2 now is places us in from a tin inventory point of view mm -hmm. as one of the top 10 biggest tin mines in the world, okay? So they mined Re resources. Resources, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So then, and uh, now going back to these outcropping pegmatites, so they mined over 12 different pegmatites. Yeah. So we've done a, a mapping program over the, our whole license area, and we've identified another 180 outcropping pegmatites. Right. 95% of those have got visible tin mineralization. So when I say we've got a big resource here, yeah. we have got a behemoth of a resource here. Yeah, no, no, again, we hear that a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so we, we've got to move from the, what potential is and we've got yeah. interests in and there's trends, et cetera, from what do you know versus what you hope? Yes. And how much money is it gonna to take to be more assured of yeah. what it is that you've got? So you've got, you've got a big area, I yeah. get that, but to me, I'm also hearing big liabilities. I'm yeah. gonna spend some money on that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm interested in, well, I, why I like your strategy is yeah. because I'm gonna get into production, I'm gonna get into cash flows yeah. quickly, which is gonna help me do the exploration bit further down the line, but I want one step at a time. So yeah. phase one, I get it. Pilot project, project we'll call yeah, it. Yeah. great. Phase two, what is that? An exploration comes down the line for me. So yeah. what is phase two where you start the, you know, improving the economics, the monetization yeah. so, of that? So the reason you drill out of resources because you want mine life, okay? Yeah. Uh, so, so you want to be able to bank mine life. So what we've got now is the ability to take this from a, a pilot project, mm -hmm. phase one, yep. feasibility, what, ha what have you, mm -hmm. and we can actually build this six times bigger. Great, how do I do that? So, so it's a, a, a combination of, of, of things. So being able to show, d d show cash flows, mm -hmm. um, it, it allows me to access bank financing, which is what we've got now through uh, a local bank in Namibia. But that's only two and a half million, that's a credit, yeah, that's yeah. A credit line. Yeah. Right? I'm talking about how do you build something? So so look, I mean, typically we would we would look for mostly a, a debt financed uh, solution. Right. And obviously, you know, I, I, I don't want to say we're going to have incur yeah. huge, huge liabilities, but yeah. you know, a project finance uh, type of uh, facility. Right. And we, we're really quite far uh, down the line in terms of securing uh, project financing for. So 100% debt? Well, uh, uh, look, for me, uh, debt is always cheaper than equity. Okay. Oh, for sure, and yeah, the shareholders yeah. are delighted. I'm sure yes. as a shareholder, you're delighted too, but yeah. w what's the reality of that conversation at the moment? Look, the, so so when it comes to equity, we guard our, our equ equity very jealously, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't ever want to do unnecessary raises, uh, you know, because uh, I, I, I feel once again, a lot of my colleagues in the in the mining industry d uh, dilute uh, the, the shareholders. You've got how many shares have you got? Like it's a lot, right? Uh, Six hundred and forty-four million. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's up there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So how much money's gone into the company today? So, uh, at, uh, well, with this with this raise, we're probably about twenty million pounds now. Right. And your yeah. market cap's about twenty million, million pounds. pounds. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so and they, let, let's look back. This year is better than last year, yes. but it's still. Let's if you even it out, it's it's fairly fairly flat. You are kind yeah. of, you've ended up where you you started the year, right? Yes, yeah. Because you're at this stage that you need to get this pilot project yes. going. Yeah. Um, how do you start affecting that share price? Because you don't want to dilute. I get yeah, it. Yeah. So you know, you're talking the language of debt. Yes. Great. You've got to see if you can actually if that actually manifest itself. Yes. Do you, so you're saying to me, I don't think I'm gonna gonna need any, raise any more capital. No, no. So saying? so. If I do raise capital, yeah. it will be strategic uh, What's capital. That? What's so, that mean? so I will look to uh, a, 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 your resource fund or a strategic partnership. Right. So, so some, uh, it, it has to be value accretive. You know, you, you, the only time you give away equity should be if you're adding. If you're adding. Value. Everyone hopes that, but the yeah. reality is sometimes that just it's not happening a lot at the moment for the junior space. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah. No, no. I, 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 I get that and. Uh, you know, we've I've been very careful as a uh, as a, the CEO to make sure that we don't get into that position that that we have to go and uh, raise unnecessary uh, yeah uh, 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 cash. Well, so, so tell me about that. So you, you've raised three point eight. You probably yeah. had what a million left from yeah. last year. Or yeah, yeah. That. yeah, Right. So what are you doing with that money? How's that going to be accretive to you, to the company? So, so the, shareholders. So the, the, um, 
it's actually a, it's, it's a it's a strategic partnership really more than than a raise so we've entered into a partnership with a, a, a zook based uh, tin trader okay. afrimet uh, okay. we've been working yeah. with afrimet for a number of years now we've got a good good relationship yeah. so they are moving a lot of tin concentrate uh-huh. out of out of uh, africa yeah. um they you know they've being a trader, they don't obviously want to tie up uh, their cash in equity. So it's it's a, that's why we've we came up with a convertible loan note structure so that right. they they're going to get a yield on the on the on the. Uh, what are the investment. terms? So it's it's a it's a ten percent uh, coupon. coupon, yeah, and uh, convertible in, into equity, and, and and it's a it's it's convertible at thirty six percent premium at at four uh, p. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's it's uh, you know once again you know it doesn't doesn't dilute our existing shareholders, but it also uh, it, you know goes back to the value accretion in that he's going to be uh, they they're going to be partners with us in terms of trading. But, but essentially, I mean, Tamsa I used to do convertibles. Okay. Yeah. So I know a little bit yeah, about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is ten percent? That's that's up up heading towards high yield territory. So ten yes. percent. That tells me a lot about. What they think of the risk profile. So why did why why is it double digit? Why why is it not lower? Well, I mean, typically, you know, it's for the you know they need they needed a, a, a return on their cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, they needed a yield, and because it's a, it's a quite a short uh, a, a short uh, tenure. Is it? It's eight, 18, 18 months. Oh, okay. Didn't so okay. so I mean, if uh-huh. if it was obviously the longer the longer. Uh, uh, it is the, the lower the okay. coupon, and that's. The, I mean, it's. So let's go back to what you're doing with it. What are you going to do that's going to keep the value accretive? So, so as, as I mentioned, we are uh, quite far advanced with um, longer term uh, debt, uh, yeah. uh, and I can't obviously. Okay. Uh, get too. Much I'll be money. the first to know, though, will I? Yes. Good. Good. Well, when I'll, you can. No, no, okay. well, I'll have to, obviously. It depends how early you, you wake up in the morning to read the RNS. Yeah. Um, but, but we are, we are um, uh, getting, to, getting to a point, um, you know, where, where we are looking to bring in a, a sort of a strategic financier. Right. So, so what, what, it, uh, what it does do is uh, sort of, uh, the, the, you know, we do need to get the plant operating into steady state. Right. So we do need to um, complete some some studies in the plant. Right. Which, uh, we need to obviously make sure that the plant is uh, getting uh, gets up to profitability in as quick a time possible. Right. Um, and then obviously uh, we do want to do some work on on the on the lithium. Uh, you know, I think okay. I think I think that the lithium is going to be a a, a, a massive. Uh, bonanza for this project. So, give me something about the team. We, we talked a little bit about you. Yeah. So what is it? What, are you technical or finance? What's, what's your? So I'm, I'm actually a, a, a second generation mining. Mining yeah. is in my in my family. Right. Uh, you know, you, if, if, funnily enough, you, you know, you you were talking earlier about your days on the on the trenches. Mm. Yeah, in, in, in Singapore. Yeah. So so I mean, I, I, we grew we grew up. Uh, my, my father worked for for Goldfields, and I, I used to ride my BMX on on the, right. on, okay. the on the tin. I was on a dredger. You on a bike? Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, yeah. so 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 you know, mining's mining's in my blood. Right. What did um, you train us? Uh, so I, I actually studied financing. Right. So my my father was the is a geologist, a mm-hmm. world renowned geologist, um, mm-hmm. and and his identical twin brother as well. And um, you know, uh, uh, I wasn't too interested in the technical side, but mm. when, when he told me you can put dollar signs in front of the rocks, I, I yeah. got, got a little bit excited. Yeah, always, <laughs> always. Yeah. Who else is on the team? So, so, f- so I've uh, I've got a, a team of engineers in house, yep. but then um, and uh, the guys that I've worked with, mining engineers, uh, metallurgi- uh, uh, metallurgical and processing mm. engineers. And uh, and geologists, uh, mm-hmm. so 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 it's quite a young young team, but like really t- t- uh, top guys that I've, I've worked with before. Yeah, uh, except for my lead engineer, he's he's a tough old. Uh, been there for yeah, been, he's, been around he's, the block. He's, he's been around the block. Yeah, um, uh, but then we've what we've also managed to do is get a really strong board of directors together. Yeah, I saw that. I so, saw that. so um, you know. Uh, 
<coughs> our chairman Glenn, you know, he he was yeah. of of Mariana. Um, yeah. um, you know, I, I, we, we've coming off a, a, a really good success story with Bushveld. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got uh, Terence Goodlice, who's a doyen of the African mining industry. I mean, you know, he's he's seen and done it all. Forty years experience. He was CEO of Impala. Uh, he sits on the board of Goldfields and and Kumba, so you know, real, uh, real sort of uh, yeah, you got heavyweight some, for sure. And you got you got some um, you got some great La non executives. There. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence is a, a professor of geology at mm. Oxford University, mm. and Roger Williams was a one-time CFO of Rand Gold. So mm. you know, it's it's a, it, going back to building a, a you know having a. Uh, building a company around a team. Yeah, but th these guys are non-execs, right? So yes, they're, yeah, yeah. they're at the end of the phone call for you and they might turn up for the odd board meeting. Is that, is that what happens? How's it work? No, they, they, they're pretty hands-on. Are they? Yeah, yeah, they're really... They, they are, they ha are they hands-on in terms of uh, you pay them? Or well, how, the, how, so, how that, so, I mean, typically NED, uh, typical NED fees, but uh, they've taken all of their, their fees in, in uh, okay. uh, stock. Okay. And, and also my, my team as well, which is... Quite unique. So we'll, we've got a salary sacrifice program. Yeah. So basically, the guys can either uh, elect to take a percentage of their salary in shares, and, and all of them, yeah. all of them have. No, I saw that. I saw yeah. that. Um, went through the annual report, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And the year before, and the yeah. year before, you were not paying yourselves a lot of money. No. Okay. No. You, you, as you shouldn't have. Yeah. So I think no, that's no. good. That's it's, good. It and is yeah. rare. So it I, is, I, yeah, I sli yeah. slightly joking, but I think yeah. it's rare. Um, you know, forty thousand pounds ish level is is yeah. not a lot of money. So you, you understood the needs of the company. And it's uh, you know, I, 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 this is this is uh, my baby. I don't want the cash. I want. I, I'd rather. You take any shares. I'd rather take shares. Yeah. Right, and the the new CFO and um, the COO. Doing the same, aren't yes. They? Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. I like a, that. A, a, a portion, yeah. A portion and or all of it? No, so. no. Well, I mean, you, they, they obviously need a bit of cash to pay the the mortgage and, and because they're one hundred percent on this project. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, I like that. Yeah. And and well, the whole team. Uh, I mean, you know, t t the the all the engineers have, have uh, elected to to take a portion of their of their salary in in uh, in shares, which which you know it's. It, doesn't seem it's it seems noble what what have you, but uh, you know it's for for highly experienced technical guys to be backing a project. You you know you've you've obviously depends what a portion is, right? Yeah. If it's ten percent, not so much. If it's yeah. fifty, okay, that's, yeah. that's another conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. But okay, so the financials uh, we're we're going to get. You said you were going to give us or the market some guidance in Q one. Yes. As to what the year ahead looks like. Yes. Can you give us some sort of insight now as to what you think is coming down the line for 2020? In terms of... What um, are you going to do? Yeah. What are these? People always talk about catalyst moments yes. and the market sometimes cares, yeah, yeah. sometimes doesn't, especially with juniors. So yeah. we've talked about market conditions for 10. Yes. You've got things started. I like that strategy. Yeah. What else are you going to do in 2020, which you think is actually going to have a positive, lasting yeah. effect on the share price because this year has been... Yeah, well, flat-ish. I mean, yeah. Look, the, yeah, let's. I mean, if we talk about the the markets and, and mm. how undervalued. Uh, oh, let's not. Let's, <laughs> not. let's <laughs> not. Let's not say that. Go on. <laughs> anyway, so so look, uh, um, but uh, you know, we are undervalued. There is no doubt in my mind. Okay, I'm, and I'm sure you've heard every single every junior, single time. Every yeah, every single junior. Mind. But but, but, that, but 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 I mean, there is a fundamental disconnect between what we have. Built and where and uh, where, where why? Because I'm looking at chat rooms and forums that yeah. I mentioned to you earlier. It they're confused. Yeah. Okay. Some people are really really excited about it. Yeah. And projecting out. Yeah. With crazy numbers. Yeah. Which which sounds good, but you got to base it on fact and reality. Yeah. And other people just don't know understand the market yeah. or what you're doing. So what are you going to do about it? So so look, I mean, the the catalysts are delivery, basically. You right. Know, we are going to deliver what we've what we've said mm -hmm. from uh, from listing, and we we have done that. Okay. So, right. So we have declared a resource. We've got into production in the first two years. Yeah. We have done a we've done a huge amount of work good. that. And we have del uh, and Good. the first shipment uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay. Marks yeah. marks are clearing out of all of our objectives, right. which is unique in itself. Right. Okay. That's yesterday and today. But exactly. what about tomorrow? Okay. So tomorrow, yeah. we 
so so profitability we want to get okay. get we want to get the plant uh, operating profitable obviously right. it's it's a it's a it's a ramp up it's a process so so we, we it's 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 by delivering the the final efficient uh, plant that that we believe we've built and that's is that not going to be part of a factor of what the price is in the market and what China and India yeah look it's due it, to it, it's, that. it's a factor of, so of profitable what do you mean uh, uh, producing the cheapest uh, ton of of right. tin possible basically okay. and that's and that's and that's what we're going to focus on so. So we're going to get those efficiencies up in, in terms of mm -hmm. uh, throughput and recovery. Those are, you know, and those are those are the two key aspects that we'll be reporting on, right. and for people to watch is uh, 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 throughput and recovery. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. So that's that's going to be the focus. Uh, we want to uh, progress our uh, our studies for phase for phase two. Mm -hmm. uh, we you know to see exactly how big we can actually build this, and and uh, so so that that's going to be a part of it. Um, we, we obviously want, you know, uh, we, we, our long-term objective is, is in the next five years, is, is to build a company that uh, produces $100 million of revenue uh, on a yearly basis. So that... There's a target. There's a target. So right. I'll speak to you in five years' time. No, you're gonna, yeah. you'll speak to me more yeah. regularly than <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. I hope. Yeah. I hope you speak. Yeah. But look, Anthony, I appreciate that's a brilliant introduction to TIN, which yes. I didn't know much about. Yeah. Um, and what your plans are. Yeah. I do you like I do you like the strategy you've started with. You obviously need to keep delivering. Yes. And hitting those numbers and talk to the market more yes. about how you're going to do it. Yeah. So look, thank you for today. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah, no, very much. And we'll see yeah. you soon. Good. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.